milligrams per deciliter. That is the red flag. It's telling you they're diabetic, they're high blood sugar. Number two, they're an ABG. ABG, you want to know if they have metabolic acidosis. Guess what? Remember from the formula? I always like to cheat. I know. I'm a cheater. But you know what? It works. I don't care. You check their bicarb, it's less than 15. Ridiculous. It's low. It's so low. Their pH drops to less than 7.3. It's telling you the message. You got metabolic acidosis. Right? So they have metabolic acidosis. Bicarb is low. Their pH is drop. Blood sugar is high. Guess one more thing. I'm like, yo, doc, I need to know the ketone levels. Number three. I order ketone levels. I check. Beta hydroxy. Butyrate, elevated acetoacetate, elevated. Board question. Bam. What agents do we use to measure acetoacetate? Nitroprusside agents, baby. I got you. There you go. Nitroprusside agents. That's what we use to measure acetoacetate. In the lab, you, you know, you don't have to worry about how to measure it. The point is just know that, know this, know this. They're going to be very high. So you check it in the serum and you check it in the urine. Ketonemia, ketouria, elevated in the urine, elevated in the blood. Guess what? You have nailed it in the coffin. Game over. You just nailed the diagnosis of diabetic ketoacidosis because diabetic glucose Ketone, elevated amount of ketones, acidosis. Money is gold. You're good. But you're not going to whack the patient. You're just not. The problem is, there's something got to be causing it. This is for clinical medicine, but on the other hand, what do we want to order? Wait a minute. I got to find where this is brought. If it's an infection, look into the blood or the blood cultures. Check into blood. Okay, maybe they're going to sepsis. You don't want to miss that, do you? That would be a bad idea. If they have an MI, what do you want to order? EKG, you want to order, you know, troponin and, you know what, CKMB. That will give you the diagnosis. It could be an MI. If it's a GI bleed, you know, work up of GI bleed very long. I'm not even going to talk about it. You probably have to need a GI consult eventually. Do hemocult. That's the first thing. Stick your hand in that butt. Rub it on the hemocult. If it's a guard positive, they're probably bleeding. It's probably from the bleeding. They're probably sending from infection. Sepsis. You get what I'm saying? To kind of find. You do a chest x-ray. Why do you want to do a chest x-ray? If they're sepsis, they have ARDS, you have that like, you know, whiting out of their chest x-ray, you're like, oh man, bilateral infiltrate. I'll be giving you the answer. Be careful. Alright? So that's what you want to do. Now that we know the diagnosis, there's still some all the extra things that you might see on the lab. And this is actually critical because a lot of patients, a lot of students don't understand this. On the labs, we already ordered labs, right? I told you to check straight. BU and creatinine, CBC, right? Because if you order the BN, BN is going to be what? I told you it's going to be up from the beginning of the lecture, so you'll be able to see that. Kind of putting the whole picture together it's like a puzzle, right? Labs, I don't know the key You said hyperosmolality, right? Remember the formula, you know, the old sodium, two times sodium plus. Blah blah blah, BUN over 18, and glucose over glucose over 18, BUN over yeah. That stuff. Don't worry about it. Here, hyposmol. It's common sense. Their blood glucose is glucose is high, the drug drink dragon water out of their cells, they are dry. Number two, hyponatremia. Let me explain why that happened. Hyponatremia occurs because somehow, somehow. Every time your blood glucose goes up, if your blood glucose goes up by 100 milligrams per deciliter, your sodium automatically drops by 1.6 milli equivalent per liter. Should we do a problem? Yeah, sure, why not? Alright, so let's say the blood glucose normally is 100. It's usually 90 to 100. Right? All of a sudden, your blood glucose goes to 200. When the blood glucose is 200, that means you've gone up by 100 points. Normal sodium, it's normally 135 to 145. In this case, I'm just going to pick 135. 
135, right? If your blood glucose goes about 100, you subtract 1.6 from this number, and lo and behold, you should get 134, actually 133.4. That's basically what that means. But the patient high, it looks like it's hyponatremic, but it's really not. It's not hyponatremic. The sodium is normal. It's because the blood sugar is high. And we talk about when we talk about the treatment. But on the other hand, what you will notice significant is a hyperkalemia. How does that happen? Metabolic acidosis, right? This is how I think of it. High acid is really bad. If you pour acid on your skin, it's gonna you're gonna you know literally hurt yourself, it's gonna bleed, it's gonna burn. So I think of a cell, right? In the presence of acids, the acid is going to eat up the cell. All the beautiful little cute little potassium inside the cell, they're going to leak out. They're all going to leak out of the cells. It's kind of this interesting mechanism, right? But that's the best way to remember it. Acid is going to, you know, literally scratch up your skin. It's going to rip everything like, open the door, open the door. Potassium is going to leak out, but it's actually false. It looks, they're hyperkalemic, but they're really not. And you'll find out. You gotta be careful when you treat these patients. And when we move on to treatment, you'll find out why. So how do we treat this patient? I came up with a mnemonic, FIP. If it works for you, perfect. If it doesn't, it's okay. It's not a big deal. So, how do we treat this patient? Treatment. Number one, fluids. You wanna give them IV fluids. Why? They are dry, they're dehydrated, they need water, they peed it all out. Give them IV fluids. Number two, what is missing? Remember, the problem is there's no insulin. So you want to give these guys insulin. The insulin, however, remember, insulin when it binds, it's going to take the potassium with it. So the potassium is going to drop. So you got to be careful. You got to give them potassium. So you give them potassium. So you make sure they don't become hypokalemic because if you're hypokalemic, they're going to present with more weakness. Remember, and one of the symptoms, they're going to have already weakness to start with. You make them more hypokalemic, they become more weak, they become arrhythmic. A lot of bad stuff can happen. So, you give them potassium, you give them insulin, FIP, and the patient should be fine. You probably have to take them to the ICU. You have to you actually have to take them to the ICU because this is a serious medical emergency. Bicarb, it's kind of controversial. Um, it depends. You have to use a clinical judgment to give them bicarb if you want. Because remember, we said the bicarb is going to drop, which it is going to drop. You know, but once you find the cause, you treat it. You know, kind of, you know, reduce the metabolic acidosis that you have had, reduce the that, you know the elevated amount of glucose. Everything's trying to come down, and that's it. That's it, guys. You just take care of one single patient. They come in, you knock them out, you figure out what's going on. It's money in the bank. So summary: We talk about the definition, pathophysiology. What causes it? We say, we say like so. It's in short, it's gonna be a patient that's gonna come. He has type one diabetes. They're gonna be hyperventilating, nausea and vomiting. We have abdominal pain in their belly, right? And they're gonna have fruity smell. You do blood sugar. The blood sugar is gonna be very high. You do. You check for metabolic acid with an ABG, and also you're gonna do X-rays and order some extra labs. This extra lab and the elevated amount of ketones will basically tell you they have a DKA. And all of a sudden, you nail this in the back. You treat their potassium, give them insulin, and give them fluids. They feel better. They say, Doc, you're the man. You saved my life. But you tell them, listen, buddy, you know what? If you get sick, you want to come to the hospital as soon as possible because you can get cerebral edema, which would be one of the complications of the... Actually, that's a complication of the treatment. But this would be a severe life-threatening emergency because if it gets really dehydrated, and when they're dry, remember? They're going to come in with tachycardic, hypotensive. That's usually what will happen with the uh, uh, dehydration. That's how you, you know like you do... Autostasis, lying down, sitting up, you know, kind of know that stuff. Uh, but you want to save their life. You say, thank you, doc. you like, it's okay, my pleasure. That's why I went to school. All right, guys, hit me up if you have any other topics you want to talk about. I really, I'm really glad to do this for you guys. Uh, just on, uh, on the end note, uh, I want you guys to visit my website, www.ftpinc.org, and also thinkpositive.com, Inc. Com. Um, and uh, you know I'm still working on this project for this FTP Inc. Would you have to visit? Invite your friends. Add me on Facebook. You can find this FTP future. It's actually FTP's uh, future teaching physicians.
and this is the website um, we got all medical students across the country to come together if you have good ideas just shoot me an email we post your you know we'll post your article on our website if you have a video something similar to this we post it on the website we advertise you we put your name we give you credit and you can always you know give your friends you know links you can put this on your CV it's a great idea all right thank you very much for watching I'll be back again with other topics in clinical medicine I always remember the only book I use for all these lectures is uh, Clinical uh, Step Up to Medicine. I wish you guys all the best. Have a good day. Bye-bye.